Being a parent to a teenager that is college-bound in today's world is not an easy task. Should you be a helicopter parent or maybe a submarine parent? Do you even know what those parenting styles mean? Well, our next guest is an expert on the subject. Marie Schwartz is founder and CEO of TeenLife.com, the leading source for learning experiences that inspire purpose and passion in college-bound teens. Every month, millions of parents and students and educators visit her Teen Life's website looking for guidance that help prepare students for college and for life beyond school. Former marketing and professional and mother of two, she heads up an editorial team that has created a reservoir of useful content including daily parent and teen oriented log blog posts, monthly newsletters, and six popular annual online print guides. Let's now welcome Teen Life founder and CEO Marie Schwartz to Urban Update. Good morning. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thank you. Wow, that's uh, quite an impressive resume you have there. Uh, let's start with, uh, I think, these uh, these teen, uh, or pardon me, these parenting styles out there. Mm -hmm. A helicopter parent, I, I've heard of that one before, but a submarine parent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there are others. Uh, yeah, there's even snowplow parents. A snowplow parent. Well, yes. let's, talk about, <laughs> let's talk about the three of them. Maybe I can figure out which one I've been, so, yeah, yeah. and everybody well, else out there. <laughs> they're all, you know, the, the, the words conjure an image, and so helicopter parents are really kind of described as overprotective and excessively involved in their kids' lives. Hovering. Hovering, exactly, and they watch and they protect and so snowplow parents aren't far behind because they try to push all the bad stuff out of the way and you know clear the path um, what ends up happening is if you're overly overprotective or overly involved in your kids lives they don't learn how to fend for themselves so you know you know the story of a, of a parent calling a teacher and saying why did my child get a bad great, you know, how dare you, um, or a coach, you know, getting involved, overly involved in sports, why is my child not playing more, um, and just basically not letting the child experience anything bad. So what has happened is that these children are now going to college and experiencing some emotional trauma because they don't know how to deal. So the, there's a book called How to Raise an Adult by Julie Lithcott Hames, if you're interested in this, in this topic, which describes her experience with seeing these students at Stanford for the past, she was a dean of students, and seeing what they couldn't deal with. And her, she she ascribed it to the you know the overprotectiveness of parents. For for example, you talk about what they can't deal with. Well, um, living alone. Li sorry, living independently, living in a group situation, yeah. um, like uh, advocating for themselves, dealing with conflict. Yeah. You know, not being able to kind of navigate. And uh, I don't know. There's one we do. This submarine parent. That's mm -hmm. the one. That right. Snowplow I get. So the helicopter <laughs> I get. Submarine. So the the <laughs> thing that I like to recommend now that I've been through it all. You know, believe me, I was a helicopter parent at times also. But a, a, a submarine. So your job as a parent is to launch a child into life. So a submarine parent. It's a kind of like seeing this boat leave the shipyard, and that, that's your child, and they're trying to go somewhere. You are basically as a submarine parent under the surface you know, hovering nearby and ready to pop up when needed. But otherwise you're out of sight, right? Not out of sight, but you're not excessively involved in your child. And you, you know, you, you pay attention. Like my mother worked my, when I was a child and she, um, but she was never absent. I could tell, you know, she was interested, engaged. We spent time together on weekends. So a submarine parent can do all those other things and still be a good parent. What are some of the uh, common challenges that uh, parents of college-bound teens face today, you think? Well, the whole college admission process has changed dramatically. Um, colleges are getting more and more applications because everything is online. So a child today will apply to 12 to 18, you know, colleges. Whereas when I went, when I applied, I don't know about you, but it was like six. And I'm so it's three, really hard, right? It's really hard to jump off the page. You know, it's the the chances of getting admitted to a college. And it's not that there are more students. That there are some, but. It's just the percentage of students who get in is that much lower because there's just so many applicants. So they're worried. Parents are very anxious that their kids aren't going to go to a, a good college. And the other thing is <clears throat> I don't think students are necessarily majoring in the right 
majors and they're coming out of college underemployed or not employed and they're moving back home. And so there's those two factors, I think, are making parents ex incredibly anxious. Talk to me about teen life. Uh, you know, teen life, what does it do? I guess, how does the online search sure. engine sort of uh, help those college bound students and parents? So um, I felt uh, when I started teen life, I wanted to expose my kids to other interests and to get them prepared or, you know, exploring things that, that would be mentally stimulating and fun. What we've done in the past eight years is really aggregated all these amazing opportunities for teens that most of us never knew existed. So you can, as a you know, high school student, go and try out architecture or engineering or veterinary medicine without, you know, without any grading, without any um, expectation that you, know, you have, to, have to be successful. And usually those kinds of environments are the most fun for students because they're with their peers and they're learning something that could potentially become a career interest. So we've, we've actually done all the homework of putting those opportunities on our site, and it's really easy just to type in an interest and then get all kinds of results that match that student's interest. Dance, language, um, you know, science, computer science, uh, all kinds of really fun stuff, cooking. Yeah. What about, um, I guess, the value of outside the classroom learning experiences like gap years, mm -hmm. people with those gap years, that year after high school and the summer experiences, some things they do in the summer? So, you know, the point of all of this is that it's important to get your child out of their comfort zone before they go to college, That, in my opinion. Some students are so burned out from high school that if they start going to college, they're just going to, you know, fall apart or just not be able to manage. There are gap year programs. So you can take a gap year, which is essentially deferring admission to college. Right. And the point of, the, of a gap year is that you should make it structured. You know, make sure you're not just sitting at home watching TV. So kids have done a variety of things, and they can include going on a semester-long trip or a community service experience or something like that. Just a couple of quick things left here. Sure. Uh, why is exper experiential learning, in your view, necessary for teens nowadays? Well, it presents, it teaches you skills that are actually make you employable. Um, critical thinking, you know, open-ended thinking. Um, problem. So, so and when you so when you say experiential, what do you what yeah. do you mean by experiential? Learning by doing. Okay. So instead of sitting there memorizing a textbook uh, or learning, you know, just doing a whole bunch of that kind of thing, l learning alone, being in a in a, a place where you're actually doing it with other people is much more like a work environment mm -hmm. and also like real life. And uh, finally, I guess to sort of wrap things up for Teen Life, you were hosting a um, first Teen Life live event. It's a virtual event uh, on January 31st. Can you tell me a little bit more sure. about this? Sure. So um, for the first time ever, we're having a, a an event where you can actually log in from home. So it can be snowing okay. all you want. And we're, we've, we've put together a, a roster of about 12 live presentations that you can listen to and also 50 exhibitors that you can visit online. Okay. We'll it's have, on teenlife.com. Okay. We'll leave it right there. Thanks for a lot of good information. We could go on, but uh, we're going to have to cut it off right there. Marie Schwartz from teenlife.com, thanks Thank for you. coming in and thanks for all that great advice. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's it for this edition of Urban Update. I'm Byron Barnett in for everybody here at the show. Have a great Sunday, everyone. We'll see you next week.